Joining us now here first on CNBC is Chewy CEO Sumit Singh. It's great to have you back on, Sumit. So, lot, lot to talk about there. Overall revenues in line, margins a miss, users a miss. So, t so tell us what you're dealing with out there. Well, as I was here last time, it's good to see you, by the way. Um, as I was mentioning last time when I was here, you know, we're really bullish about Chewy's future. I mean, we're delivering 24% growth this quarter on a year-over-year -year basis, which is comping a 45% year last year. Our autoship sales that represents the health of the consumer and the recurring repeat nature of our business you know, is up 140 basis points year-over-year, -year, uh, achieving a new company high. And then, you know, share of wallet or net sales per active customer, which again represents customer engagement and in the way that they spend on our platform is up with a new record company high at nearly $420 or up $56 year over year. So overall, when you look at this, right, the momentum strong, customers healthy, our strategy is intact. And, you know, the cost of revenue is essentially what we're dealing with, just like everybody else has been right now in the industry, dealing with disruptions across the supply chain, which essentially were elevated as we moved out of Q2 into Q3. So overall, you know, we remain uh, steadfast and focused on the long-term strategy, and we're proud to be executing at a 24% growth year-over-year -year level. But I just have to zero in on the customer additions, 330K during the quarter, which was a miss, and the overall 20.4 million. There, there is this lingering concern out there around your stock that it was a pandemic play. You did really well, people adopted pets, and you got a ton of, a ton of customers during the pandemic with everybody at home and shopping online, and that is tapering off, and you're just not going to see that kind of demand and that kind of growth in users. What do you say to that? Yeah, we're not we're not really seeing it that way. Let me let me give you a few data points, right? So, if you look at the years 2018 and 19 prior to the pandemic, both those years we added roughly 1.3 billion dollars in growth, and then came the pandemic and we added 2.2 billion dollars of growth. And then this year post pandemic, when you look at our guidance, we would add somewhere about 1.8 billion dollars of growth. So, if you take the pandemic out, right, we've accelerated the growth that we were delivering 2018-19 timeframe by roughly 30% or more. The industry certainly isn't growing at 30% or more, so we continue to gain share is one implication of that statement. As far as the gross ads is concerned, you know, it's simply a, a math equation. And, and what you're seeing here is that we're overlapping or lapping a really large set of cohort that we acquired last year. And so our gross ads remain higher than our pre-pandemic levels and our churn rates remain completely stable. So it's just a matter of mathematics that as we play through this year, those gross ads number, even though all other inputs seem in line, you know, the interpretation of that is that something must be wrong, but in fact, nothing is wrong. Uh, you know, customer engagement's healthy, additions are healthy, and uh, you know, overall top line's great. What about net spending uh, per active customer? What are you seeing there and what are your expectations? What will you share on the conference call coming up? Yeah, so net sales per active customer was up 15% year over year, actually 15.6% year over year, or $56. It's the highest increase that we've seen. You know, I, I already mentioned that auto ship was up roughly 140 basis points. Our average order values are up 6% and 13% relative to 2020 and 2019. Everything, David, basically in the way that we measure customer engagement, stickiness, loyalty, repeat purchase rate, AOV and subscription to Autoship, all of these metrics that indicate the health of the consumer and their engagement towards our brand is pretty strong. And uh, you know, as a result, you know, I continue to come back to the fact that we're executing to the long-term strategy and we're overall, we're bullish on Chewy's future.